Creating intricate looking animations doesn't have to be difficult. I created this animation here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the seven techniques that I used to help elevate the look and feel of the project. By the end of this video, you'll have gained the knowledge to apply all of these techniques to your own projects, and you'll see just how easy that they can be. The first technique that I want to share with you is just how we create this awesome looking 3D text, because this is actually all done in After Effects. So in a pre-comp here, I have my text, and I split this out into three different characters. I can simply select all of my layers and change the layer to be 3D. You'll now notice that I get extra dialog boxes pop up. And over here, there's the one that says 3D renderer. Now we can actually change between different renderers. The one I'm wanting is the cinema 4D renderer. This opens up this geometry options box here. Now by having this, I can open my geometry options and you'll see here this extrusion depth. By increasing this, it will actually extrude my object. Now, this isn't just limited to text. You can also do this on shapes too, to create things like cubes and cylinders within your scene. Now, in this example, I actually set my extrusion depth to about 300. And I felt like it gave me a large amount of depth on my characters. So I'll just do that for the other two as well. So now we have this extruded 3D text. Although it looks cool, it's quite hard to actually see what's going on. So there's two things that I did to tackle this. Now, first of all, is just the 3D text itself. I wanted some rotation on this just to actually make it feel a bit more 3D. Now I could go into my layer here, press R for my rotation, and manually rotate each layer. And sometimes I've actually done this because I wanted the character to spin. However, in this instance, I wanted to affect everything as a whole rather than actually animating each piece. So we're going to need two things. First, we're going to go to Layer, New, and Camera. And we're just going to press OK. And then we're also going to need a null object to control this camera. And I'll show you why in just a second. So we'll go to Layer, New, Null Object. And I'll rename this to Cam Control. Now, if I just quickly change this to be two views, you'll see that if I begin to rotate my camera, it actually rotates the camera as if I was holding the camera and doesn't focus on the object. Now, by having this null, if I was to parent my camera to the null object and make my null object 3D, and then press R on here to then do my rotations, you'll see instead it orients around the null that I've parented it to. Now you'll notice that my camera controller is actually off the center of my text. So I'm just gonna unparent my camera from that. And I just want to set the position on the Z to be 150. And that's just because my text extrusion is set to 300. And now this null is perfectly centered to my text. And we can just reparent that by dragging the pick whip to the null. Now if I press R on my camera, controller null, I can change my X position to be 15, and that gives us the same look as what I had in my animation. A slight rotation on the text, just adding a bit of visual interest. Now, if you want to learn After Effects from the complete beginning, you can check out my Motion Essentials course, where I'll guide you through everything that you need to know to master After Effects and finally create projects that you're proud of. You can check out the link to that using the description below. Now, while this looks great, it's still really hard to distinguish what these characters actually are and what we're trying to spell out. But that leads me to my next technique, and that's adding layer styles to 3D objects. Now, unfortunately, it's not as simple as me right-clicking this layer, going to Layer Styles, and Gradient Overlay. You'll see that nothing actually happens. If I disable 3D on this layer, it will apply it. But if I re-enable it, we have no layer styles. So what's going on? Well, when we use the Cinema 4D renderer, it kind of disables certain things and it doesn't allow us to use layer styles with this renderer. But there's a workaround and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So first we're going to want to make sure that our objects are in their own pre-comp for this. And then we're going to open up the dialog box here and select our layer and you'll see this animate button kind of like we would add a range selector. Instead, I'm going to animate the front color and RGB. 
and now you can see that that's gone red. I'm going to go to the add button here. I'm going to go to add property and this time I'll choose the side color and RGB again. And then if this was to have a rotation in and we saw the back as well, we'd also go add property back color and RGB. Now it's no good having all these the same color. So I'm going to say that my side color is green and my back color will be blue. And these are just really easy colors to key, which is what we're going to need to do. So now I'm going to copy this animator with Control and C and just paste it to my other two layers. So now we have a red front, a green side and a blue back on all of them. Now, as this is a pre-comp, we need to put this into a new composition. So I'm going to do Control and N and I'll just call it main text and I'm going to drag in my 3D text comp that I've already made. Now we're actually going to need three duplicates of these. So I'm going to create three and one's going to be our front, one will be our side and one will be our back. And we're going to need to key out each side of this text. So we'll start with the front and we need to add the key light effect. And this is using the free plugin FX console to search for my effects. Now I want to key out the colors that I don't want. So as my front is red, I'm going to choose the screen color to be green. Now we don't see the back here, so I could kind of get away with not doing that one. And I'll just turn off my other layer and you'll now see that I just have the red of my text. I can then turn on my side layer and again, I'll add the key light effect. And we'll change the screen color to be red. So it just shows the green. And then we add these together and you can see our text is back to normal. However, this time, because these aren't 3D layers and we're not using the Cinema 4D renderer, I can right click this layer, go to layer styles and gradient overlay. And now everything works as it should. And on the side, I can do the exact same. I could do a color overlay instead. And that is kind of the workaround for using the Cinema 4D renderer with layer styles. And it's a technique that I absolutely love when making 3D text. So now let's talk about how I achieved this 3D hat looking movement. And it's actually all one 2D shape layer. There's no 3D to it, but it kind of helps sell the element of this whole animation being 3D. So I've brought in my party hat into its own pre-comp and I'll show you exactly how this works. So if we open up this layer and open up the contents, there's a bunch of different shapes going on, but the main one is this circle. So I'm just going to turn that off for a moment and you'll see that this is simply a shape that I've made and it's just a triangle with rounded corners and some shapes in the middle to give that party height illusion. On this, I've then done a Y position and a rotation. And really, this is all that's happening on the whole layer. Now, the trick is I'm actually using a circle added on top in the same shape layer that's animating as well. And that gives the illusion of this moving in 3D space. If we open this up, I'm actually animating the size of the ellipse path to go from larger to smaller. And again, larger and smaller and by doing that it gives the illusion that this hat is actually rotating forward as though it was in 3d space now on top of everything else here the thing that i think really adds to this animation is all of this confetti coming out when these characters hit the floor so let me show you exactly how i've made that too now in a new comp here i'm going to add a solid with Control and y and we'll just call that confetti. And we're going to add an effect to this, and it's gonna be called CC Particle World. Now, if we just play this with the standard effect on, and I lengthen my timeline here, you could see that this is definitely not confetti, and it's just continuously birthing particles, and it kind of looks like fireworks. And it's actually really easy to get a confetti look out of this. So I'm gonna go into my effects here, and I'm gonna go down to particle, and this is where we can choose our particle type. So we have all these different options and you can do some really cool stuff with this effect. However, the one that I used was the quad polygon. And you can see if I hit play now, we're kind of having this come out, but it's not really explosive. It doesn't really sell the idea that there's a big burst of energy. It kind of just falls and dissipates. So we can really easily change that by going into our physics up here 
And on the velocity, I'm just going to increase that to five. And now you'll see that these spurt out everywhere and it's going crazy. But there's definitely too much of it. And I don't like that it doesn't really fall down. It's kind of like too much energy. So to do that, we can just increase this gravity. So I'm just going to double it to one. And now you'll notice that these particles begin to fall towards the end as well. And you can increase this gravity field if you want it really, really strong. So I'm just going to set that back to one. And then what I will do instead is I actually need to affect the birth rate of this. So it's not constant throughout our scene. So I can go to my birth rate here and create a keyframe. And I'll just press U to bring everything up on my timeline. And I'll just move that forward a couple of frames with Alt and my right arrow. And then at the start, I'll set my birth rate to zero. And then I'll move forward to about one second and set my birth rate to zero as well. Maybe we could bring that back. And we can just select those and press F9. And if we wanted to, we could do some custom easing as well. And now we're going to have these particles kind of burst on and then fade off. Now to accompany my confetti, you might have noticed I also have these streamers going on. Kind of like a party pop has gone off alongside the confetti. So in a comp here, just to demonstrate, I'll get my pen tool and I'll increase the stroke to about 20 and I'll turn off the fill. I'm just going to draw a slightly curved line and we're going to add an effect to this. So we'll select our layer and add a wave warp. Now I believe in my original animation, these were actually left as default. But the property that we want to really focus on is this direction. So I'm going to set it to the same direction as the line. And you can see immediately we have this really wavy looking line, which is perfect. Now at the minute, it's really not doing much and it doesn't look very interesting. So there's two ways that I went about this. First would be scaling the subject. So I'm going to select my layer and press Y to change my anchor point tool and actually drag this down to roughly where my text was. So in this instance, I'll just place it roughly in the middle of my comp. And then I'll press S on my keyboard to bring up the scale and I'll create a keyframe and just move that forward a little bit. And then I'll drag this down and you can see it's going to burst from the middle. Now, I didn't actually set this to zero. I kind of wanted it to appear on screen a little bit. And then I'm going to select both of these easings, press F9, and we'll go into our graph here. And this is on the speed graph. I'll set that to view. And I'm just going to bring this in so we have no easing and then all the easings on the end and we're gonna have this real big burst of energy now to really sell this i added an effect called trim paths so i'm going to select my layer up to the add here and we'll add the trim paths and i'll just open this up and these values here are our start and end now the end is going to change the end point of our path and it does take into account the wave warp which is perfect and the start will change the start point of our path. And all we need to do is animate both of these values. So at the start, I'll create a keyframe on the end and I'll just move that over and then I'll set that to zero. And then we also want to do this to our start as well. But I'm going to do this just a couple of frames after. So I'll create a keyframe, move forward and then set that to 100. I can ease both of those by selecting them and pressing F9. And now we're going to have the end begin to draw on, but then the start is going to catch up behind it. It gives this kind of drawn on kind of effect as though it's streaming. And it's a really simple technique to layer up, but it also sells the illusion of those streamers floating through the air. Then to just get more of these, I simply duplicated one, offset them in time a little bit and change the wave warp direction and maybe the path slightly. Now, I think one thing that really sells the illusion of this being 3D is the shadows. Because without these, this looks really flat and kind of boring. But they're actually super easy to make and really don't take a lot of time to really elevate that look of your project. So first of all, I'm just going to duplicate this front comp here and I'm just going to drag it down to the back. And I'll just call this text shadow now you'll notice if i just bring this down to the bottom it doesn't really look much like a shadow at the minute so we're going to add two effects first we'll add the fast box blur and i'm going to set that to about 40 and then i'm also going to add a fill to this as well and i'm going to use my eyedropper here to select the background and then just make that a slightly darker color now you'll notice nothing's actually happened and that's because there's layer styles on this and they take priority over our fill effect. So I just need to go down to my comp here and hide the layer styles. 
Now, while we're getting shadows, it's certainly not right and certainly not like a floor shadow. So first of all, let's press S on our keyboard and I'm gonna unconstrain these proportions. And I'm simply gonna bring my scale down to about 20%. And that's gonna flatten everything out so it looks like a floor shadow. But now the problem we're having is our text is moving with the shadow, which if the shadow was on the floor, it wouldn't really move and jolt about as much with the animation. So the way I fixed this was to simply create a duplicate of this comp. So if I go right click and reveal in project, I actually created a second comp that had no animation on it and called this 3D text shadow. So I'm just gonna hold Alt while I click and drag this down to my text shadow to replace that comp. And now you'll notice that the shadow's there, but now it's not moving and it also doesn't feel right. So all we need to do is keyframe the shadow on the scale property. So I'm gonna press S on my keyboard to bring up the scale. And I'm gonna create a keyframe at the start. And as this text comes down and hits the ground, we're gonna make this shadow about half because as things get closer to the ground, it's actually gonna shrink its shadow size. And then as it goes back up, I would set that back to 20. And then I would ease those and also copy my easing from my main text. Now, this obviously isn't timed perfect, but I just wanted to show you how the shadows actually work. And the same is for the confetti as well. So on my confetti shadow, I've actually just duplicated that layer and scaled it down as well. But because this is using CC Particle World, it's all kind of taken care of for me. So all I had to do was add the fill and add the Fastbox Blur to soften that out. Now the final little technique and the final bit of detail that I really, really like in this animation is these little stars that pop on and pop off. And you might be thinking, but Scott, that's, that's simply just a shape layer. Well, while it is, there's something that I want to show you that I never knew existed until recently, and I can't believe I never even found it. So in a new comp, we'll just go ahead and use the ellipse tool to create a shape. So I'll just hold control and shift, and then I'll set the stroke down to zero, and we'll change the fill. I might be thinking right now, but Scott, this isn't a star. Why would you use this? There's a whole star tool right here that you can use and manipulate. Well, you're right, but there's a better, easier way to create that kind of four-pointed star. We're going to select our shape layer, go to Add, and we're going to use Pucker and Bloat. And this exists in Illustrator, and it actually blew my mind because the amount of times that I've drawn this shape is unbelievable. Now, we can simply change the amount on this Pucker and Bloat to a negative number, and it's going to pull the sides of this circle inwards. And you can see we begin to get that star shape. Now, what I love about this is it can actually do some pretty cool looking effects and patterns, and you could actually get really creative with this effect and then layer that up with others, and it can lead to some wacky things. But I really wanted to share in case it was something that you might have missed as well. And then to animate this, I simply just animated the scale and opacity on each one and offset them in time. These are only a handful of techniques that I use within my projects to make them that little bit better. And there's certainly plenty more that you can learn. To do that, you'll want to check out this video next, where I'll cover even more techniques that you can use within your projects.